Now, I gave you a definition of excellence taken from the American Heritage Dictionary. Excellence, they said, is to be superior in quality, greater in quantity, and to go beyond what is expected. What you could call the defining qualities of excellence are threefold. People of excellence strive to do everything with exceptional quality. Now, <clears throat> you need to understand we're not talking about competing with anyone else. We're not talking about being perfect. Uh, we're not talking about never making a mistake, never uh, always being perfect in that. We're talking about <clears throat> being the best that we can, doing the best that we can. We're talking about being better today than we were yesterday and being better tomorrow than we were today. We strive to do everything with exceptional quality. Number two, it means people of excellence are hardworking, diligent, and productive. And number three, people of excellence go beyond what is expected or required. Are we settling for mediocrity or are we striving for excellence? <clears throat> Let's just take a quick look at those three aspects, defining qualities of excellence. Number one, people of excellence strive to do everything with exceptional quality. They go beyond just doing a job. It's doing their job in a way that is outstanding, exceptional, and deserving of praise. That means <clears throat> that if you're a janitor and you're mopping the floor, that you do it with the same sense of excellence, the same attention to detail, the same diligent and conscientious effort as Michelangelo when he painted the Sistine Chapel. When you mop the floor, the angels in heaven ought to stop so they could admire your work. Whatever it is that we do, do all to the glory of God. Whatever you put your hand to, do it with all your might. Whatever you do, do it with all of your heart as unto the Lord and not as unto men. And we're talking about an attitude that constantly seeks to glorify God, that does their work with a fervent spirit, a full heart, and wholehearted to God. They strive to do everything with exceptional quality, even the smallest of things. John D. D. Rockefeller Jr. said the secret <clears throat> of success is to do common things uncommonly well. To do common things uncommonly well. Heard a story about a Harvard professor gave an assignment, a 10-page assignment to be completed by his, stu his students. <clears throat> and one of them turned in their paper. The next day, it was returned to him with a note on it that said, <clears throat> is this the best you can do? So he said, okay. He took the paper, he went home, rewrote the whole thing, added more research, gave it, polished it up a little bit, and he brought it back to the professor only to get it back the next day with a note on it that said, is this the best you can do? So he took his paper, he went home, rewrote it, polished it up, added some more material, gave it to the professor, <clears throat> came back the next day with a note on it and said, is this the best you can do? Took the paper, <laughs> went home, rewrote the whole thing, 
and came in the next day to class and said, this is the best I can do. And the professor said, good. Now I'll read it. <laughs> he was saying, I don't, want, I don't want to read it if it's not the best you can do. <clears throat> and God sometimes, I think, comes to us and says, is this the best you can do? Is that the best sermon you can preach? Is the best song you can sing? Is that the best um, in the nursery you can be? Is Whatever we do, there ought to be, it ought to be said of us, as it was said of Jesus, that we do all things well. That our whole way of approaching things is to glorify God, and God is glorified by a sense of excellence. They strive to do everything with exceptional quality. Secondly, they're hardworking, diligent, and productive. Not only are they superior in quality, <clears throat> they are greater, says the American Heritage Dictionary, they are greater in quantity. In other words, they're pr productive. God is interested in his people being productive. People who strive for excellence know that there is no substitute for hard work and conscientious effort. They know that there is no quick fix for serious problems, no easy solutions for difficult situations, no shortcuts for instant success. Excellence doesn't happen by chance. You don't drift into excellence. You don't stumble into quality. They come by intentional purpose and diligent effort. The parable of the talents basically said that God commended the one received ten, one received five talents, one received one. Well, they one received ten and the one who received five doubled what they had. And God said he commended them for their productivity, that they took what God had given to them, they had multiplied it and were productive with it. The one who had one talent, he buried it. He, he basically maintained status quo, didn't, didn't add to it, didn't, uh, wasn't conscientious in multiplying it. He simply buried it. And God called him a wicked, lazy slave. He said, God wants us to take what he has given to us and be productive in what we do. Sometimes people get the idea, you, you heard I mentioned about Philip Yancey's book on grace, what's so amazing about grace. Well, sometimes we get the idea grace is sitting around in a hot tub sipping pina coladas, and grace is, I, I don't do it, God does it. Right? Grace means God does it all. I, I, when people say, let go and let God. <clears throat> I said, well, it depends upon what you mean by let go and let God. If you mean let go of um, controlling the universe, let go of the need to be God and to control everything, and let God be God, then I can agree with you. If you mean let go of your responsibilities, let go of uh, what, what we should be doing and just let God do it, then that, that misses the point completely. And what God is looking for in fact, the, the Apostle Paul, sometimes we have the idea that hard work is not part of grace. Paul the Apostle said in first, 1 Corinthians 15, 10. 
I am what I am by the grace of God. And his grace toward me did not prove to be in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than all of the other apostles. Yet not I, but the grace of God working in me. It sounds almost schizophrenic. It's like, by the grace of God, I am what I am. It's all by the grace of God. But his grace didn't prove to be vain in my life. In fact, it motivated me to work harder than all the other apostles. But it wasn't me. It was the grace of God doing it. So there, God's grace not only seeks exceptional quality, it seeks to be productive and diligent. We're going to touch on that diligence in a few moments. The third thing is that people of excellence go beyond what is required or what is expected. They do what is expected and then some. What I call and then some people. There are people who give everything and then some. There are people who do everything required and then some. They go the extra mile, they give the extra effort, they put in the extra time and then some. What is the and then some factor? Um, I, I, I've learned to ask myself whenever I'm teaching, whenever I'm ministering in some way, whenever I'm doing virtually anything, I ask myself, what's the and then some factor <clears throat> that will cause this to rise above, to excel, to stand out? from just being average. People who settle for mediocrity are what you could call and no more people. They do what's required and no more. They do as little as they can and no more. They drift along in the path of least resistance. They avoid challenges, opportunities that will enable them to grow. They basically just try to get along with as little as can be done. They maintain status quo. They keep things pretty much as they are because if we change things, then we got to, that's going to mean a lot of extra work. So those three qualities characterize or could be called the defining qualities of excellence. How do you become a person of excellence? I think Paul gives us a key in Romans chapter 12, verse 11 where he says there are three things that are important. Number one, don't lack, lack uh, diligence. Do not lack in diligence. Number two, he says, what does he say? <laughs> that be fervent in spirit. And number three, serve the Lord. Let's take a look at those three things. Do not lack indulgence. Diligent people, what does diligence mean? Basically, there's three, three aspects um, to the word diligent. When we talk about diligent people, we're talking about people who are industrious, who are productive, who are hardworking. Uh, so they are Productive workers, industrious workers, hard workers. Secondly, they are conscientious. They thoughtfully plan and carefully carry out their plans. They don't sort of slap it all together at the last minute. And it's, it's, thought, it's thought through, it's applied, it's uh, carefully executed. The third aspect is the aspect of steadfastness, even in the face of difficulties resistance or obstacles. They are conscientious. They are steadfast. They are productive. They know that nothing worthwhile is accomplished ultimately without hard work and conscientious effort. 